Cool. Hopefully we got some. Uh, hopefully got some f something streaming here. We'll just see how we go. We we'll keep an eye on it and uh, and see what's happening. Hi, it's David Shumi at Fixer Frame in Brisbane, and today I just thought I'd quickly uh, go live and show you this little job that we're doing. It's a bit outside the norm for picture framers. Very very simple, but something that a lot of people still ask about, which is uh, clip frames. And clip frames were very popular, sort of back in the back in the uh, 70s, I guess, even even 70s and 80s, where they'd put a little picture into a frame and uh, into a uh, basically between a piece of glass and usually it was, it was a masonite backing uh, and then it was held together with some clips. Now these are called Swiss clips and although they're still available we generally don't do this sort of stuff. So when someone came in the other day and they had these old ones but they wanted to put basically they had three pictures that were inside clip frames and they wanted to put them into one new clip frame we suggested that we could try and do it using their old material. So what I'm gonna do, I've just already started to get this apart, but I thought I'd show you how I'm gonna repurpose three little old black and white clip, frame, uh, clip frames with photographs in and make them into a new, uh, a new piece. So we're streaming live out of Fixer Frame at Mount Cravat in Brisbane, Australia. And if you've got any questions, by all means, type them in the comments. I'll I'll read all those comments and I'll answer them if you've got any questions about what's going on. So I'm going to pop it down onto the uh, table here so you should be able to see uh, what I'm doing and I'll try and just talk you through it. Shouldn't take very long but we'll just have a look and, and you can see if you ever want to repurpose some clip frames yourself. You can, if you find any old ones, you can always pull them apart and turn them into a new frame. Now remember if you want to learn framing you can always do something with uh, at framersclub.com uh, they've got a whole archive of picture framing techniques and uh, certainly if you need to get hold of us uh, you can always look us up at fixerframe.com.au so I'm going to flip it onto the table and we'll see how we go so bear with me while I turn this around now hopefully we're going to get that uh, just down on the on the table there we might be able to see what's going on cool so I've got my little uh, my little uh, clip frames we'll take one apart and have a look at what's actually going on in the inside these basically they've tied the wire on to the clip itself and these are these are a certain type that go down in, into a slot some of the old types of clips had a little hole and that hole itself was one and a sixteenth inch in from the the edge and you made a little hole to make the piece work but what with these clips they have actually a little um, a little kind of uh, clip and uh, ledge on them that's going to clip into a slot so this is slightly adjustable I can see that they've made a, a bigger slot so that you can adjust them and they need to be pulled out from the back and taken off the glass now we'll just have a look at what's inside because this is basically a commercial thing people would buy these in photo shops and uh, in this example here's our backing with our little slots cut in it you can see here this is build how clip frame uh, from uh, from originally from Germany so of all things now or maybe they did used to call them Swiss clips so maybe the original the, maybe the these are original uh, Swiss I just read the German there but it might actually be uh, Switzerland so that's just the original piece of paper in the back and someone has hinged these photographs to the matting from the top some nice little black and white photos so we're gonna actually take that I'm not gonna peel that tape off I'm just gonna cut it it does look like it's actually they've used some decent tape we've got the old bits of glass and backing we're not going to use those so I'll gather those together let's just keep these pictures here for a sec we're not going to use that old glass or material but we are going to use the clips and that's what I wanted to salvage from this uh, from this setup because although we can still get these clips it's a little bit tricky for us to get 
you know, we don't want to buy hundreds of thousands of these for the odd little job that we might do. So in this case, what we're, what we're using, we're going to try and recycle the, the clips that we've got. So I've kept them all off here. Now, we had the three photographs. Obviously, it's a European holiday because we've got a uh, trip to Venice. Uh, not sure where that one is, but anyway, nothing written on the back. Can't really, really tell. And uh, this one looks like either uh, an Italian uh, farmhouse or it might be French. You know, it sort of looks like the European vacation. And that's how they've done them in three separate frames. So now what we're going to do is make a new piece for it. I'd actually already laid out, I'd, I'd cut a mat board and I just laid it out on the table here and I put a piece of glass on top of it and I've cut some of it already but the reason I was doing it this way is I wanted to make sure that the glass was the exact size of the backing and although our glass cutter is very accurate, our glass cutting machine, in this example it's going to work a lot better if I just line up my cutter and rail right with the mat so that we get a an accurate cut and what that's going to do that's going to allow me to have this sized perfectly to the mat board size so we'll talk about the glass a little bit more in a minute but basically I just cut a, a piece of glass to fit the face of the mat here we've got a new a new board they've actually done it where it's a little bit wider on the base and the three pictures are going to go in order and then with their sequence we're going to take these off i'm actually going to just cut this off the old matting because rather than trying to peel uh, any tape sometimes uh, you do more harm removing some of these tapes and just actually leaving them alone so i've just cut along there pop our piece out and I suspect these may have actually been uh, framed in Europe and framed a while ago. And the reason for that is when I look on the inside, I see some measurements written and the measurements are actually in metric. And most of the early framing, both here in Australia and in the UK, and certainly still in America, was in imperial measurements. Uh, so they would have written things in inches. But there to have sizes written on in millimetres makes me think this is either done maybe a little bit more recently, but I suspect it may have been actually done originally in Europe and then they've come to Australia, they've moved, they've kept them all those years. Because, you know, a black and white photo like that is not particularly common anymore. So one of the old style black and whites. And then we're going to pop these into the frame. So let's line them up. With this, we're just going to hinge it to the uh, to the mat itself, and uh, we'll use some of the, the P90 tape. We've used that before. You've seen seen us use that before. That's actually a German tape. Now, in this example, rather than go through uh, putting a, a separate backing and hinging them to the backing, we are actually going to tape them straight back to the mat, just like they were done in the past. This is just a little cheap job. It's nothing fancy but obviously we want it to last for the for the customer so I'm going to come on and just position that from the face and give it a little tap on the top I can flip it over and just burnish down those those little hinges and we'll do the next one same way. So often we don't hinge uh, photographs to the mat itself. We usually hinge them to backing material. But in this example, we may be able to fit a small backing in, but I don't think there's a lot of room in behind the photograph itself to fit a backing as well as the uh, MDF or Masonite backing that is going on the clip frame. So yeah, just hinge both. 
And again, I'm not using a lot of this tape, just a couple of pieces really, just to hold it in place. So we got three, three in a row. Now on the back of that, it's probably, we're not gonna quite, I think, have enough room to fit, although we'll take a quick look. Yeah, I suspect we're not gonna have enough room to put another backing there, but potentially we could use one of the, um, the paper pieces. Let's have a look at the size. We're looking at 477 by 232. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to go and grab, I'll actually get a piece of matting that'll fit in there so it'll act as a barrier between our, our backing board. So I'll just be one sec because I've got to go and grab that. 230, 477, won't be a tick. Yeah, so just to act as a barrier, I've just gone and got some of our uh, white acid-free mat board, and that will become a, an extra backing just to sit in there to act as a space to protect these photos from touching the uh, MDF backing. So what we did in here is on the old uh, on the old board, it already had some slots cut. And they must have been machine made at that at that angle, so that when the when the uh, the clip goes into position, it locks into that little bevel. So we couldn't actually cut. We didn't cut them on a bevel. All we did was we cut some slots out on our computerized cutter. But you could cut these with a chisel, or you could cut them with a a, a knife. But the only thing to bear in mind is you do want that distance to reflect where the clip is going to fit. So once that clip is on, it's got to actually spring onto the glass and the slot of the clip has to go into that little ledge. So we just made it um, 21 millimetres in this example in from, the, in from the edge of the board itself. So that's going to become our backing. And so I'm just going to keep that under. Now this is a little bit different than normal picture framing because we don't have a frame involved. And with the glass that we've got here, the glass itself, when it's cut, uh, normally has a very sharp edge. But on these clip frames, what used to happen was the edges themselves were run through uh, a little grinding stone, and these edges were just flat polished. And what that did, that prevented it from being sharp and you cutting yourself. So I don't have a grinding stone anymore for glass because we don't often do this. So what I thought I would use is I've got some uh, wet and dry. This is actually like a 400 grit wet and dry sandpaper. And I've probably got some a little bit coarser. Let's have a look, we'll take some of this. Just take a little bit of, this is an aluminium oxide paper. It's just a 180 grit, so a little bit coarser. And I'm gonna put my glass just off the edge of the bench there and I'm just going to take a small sanding. I've got a little cork block inside. This is just to take off any sharp edge. I'm going to go all the way around and we'll go all the way around with the... Um, we'll go all the way around with our um, wet and dry paper as well. Just so when someone touches it, they're not going to cut themselves. Because often these, these type of frames were designed for people to buy them, take them home and put their own pictures in, rather than a framer do it. 
they were one of the, the early DIY type of frames. So yeah, I'm just going to go around. I'm going to do both sides. Probably doesn't need it so much on the inside. But again, I may as well do it while I've got it here. No special stone, and I could go a bit more than this, but I, I think just a fine, a fine sand there is going to be enough. I'm just going to go back over it again with the finer, the finer 400, just so they put a little bit of a polish on there. Again, I don't really want any little, any little gritty bits or anything where the customer may actually hurt themselves. Now we've had, uh, when I first started framing back in the uh, in the mid 80s, we had um, people come in in London into our shop in Crouch End where they would get these made and I used to have to make them um, but at the same time we'd always try to talk them into getting a real frame because usually they came in with a broken one, one of the new glass put in it, and in one hand they had the broken clip frame and in the other hand they had the, uh, you know, the six-year-old child whose bedroom the clip frame was hanging on the wall in. And these, not particularly a safe, I don't see them as a safe option, but they are still, I guess, still popular in some circumstances. So once I've got all those edges, just a little polish on them so that there's no sharpness to it. I'm going to give that a little bit of a blow just to get rid of the, the dust off the, off the table. And hook out a little blower there. give it a bit of a clean and so we're just going to go with our standard uh, glass cleaner and unlike uh, when we clean one in a picture frame we're going to clean that flat on the bench here I don't really want to touch the edges of the glass I want to try and get that clean internally we we'll worry about the outside in a minute So I've got the other parts, I just want to give that a little bit of a blow with the, the air blower as well. And so rather than picking up the glass and risking hurting myself with that one potentially, I'm just going to put the, the piece right on top, whole thing together. And at this stage, I'm not really going to turn it over yet. I'm just going to use the clips that we had. The clip itself is going to go onto the front on the glass and then it's going to come around to that slot. I've just got to see where the, where the piece is fitting. Now, they, this size, they may, I was going to actually, we'll cut the wire off, we'll, we'll, we'll put some new wire on. It's rather a, rather an old bit of brass wire. That was probably one of the reasons they, things fell down with the clip frames, is that the, the people would try to make clip frames that were too big for the size of what they were really designed to cope with. Like on a small piece, you can imagine some small, small frame pieces. It's not going to be too, uh, too much tension on these to hold the whole thing together. But on uh, on a large, uh, a large print, 
you got a large bit of glass that when something like this doesn't have the rigidity of a frame to hold it together, you've got issues with the um, the flexibility of the whole thing causing uh, or presenting an issue that if the uh, glass or if the backing twists that the glass does not take a twist and it will actually break and I think that's the mo most uh, problem that happens with a clip frame. So at this stage I've just I've just pushed them on. I haven't even looked at the front yet. We'll take a look at th that in a second. We'll get that last clip off there. We'd, oh, there we've got a spare one. We'll use that and we'll keep the other ones for later. So in this case, I've just used six. Two on the sides, one on the top and bottom. It's not a particularly big uh, arrangement. Just tap those along a little bit to the position where they're even on both sides. Just need to pay attention to that one. Yeah, we've got a uh, pretty high pressure week because it's been short weeks with public holidays here in Australia. We've had a we've had uh, a run of them with Easter, and then uh, we had Anzac Day. And this coming week, we've got a, a another long weekend. So everybody's all hard at it, trying to get it done. So you can see I've put the clips on uh, all the way around. They clip into them on on the backing like that, and then that front piece I'm now going to give it a clean spray a little bit on glass cleaner onto there clean from the face it's a little bit tricky if you ever get dirt in here because you do have to open them up and yet there's no seal on the edge so they do tend to get dust into them over time which can present an issue but that looks pretty clean and these edges are quite smooth they're not going to actually uh, cut anybody if they handle it and so then we've got to go back and although this isn't sort of uh, I guess um, standard picture framing kind of stuff it's something that you might come across if you're hunting out old pictures or if you've got old pictures you may want to actually uh, do something like that so yeah, we, we often used to rivet into the backing with a bifurcated rivet, which is a split rivet. We used to put D-rings onto these, and probably we could put D-rings, but I'm going to just put the wire back on to the uh, clip that they had, so there's enough room there to actually get through around itself. Like, we always loop the wire around itself and back through the whatever you're tying it off on so it doesn't slip. In this case, a little clip. I'll run through that knot again. We have, that's a very common uh, knot that we use in picture framing. That is that the, the, the wire goes through the hole, then it runs around itself and back down through the hole again. That way you're making a sort of slip knot and that way there's no slippage when you tie the wire off. And so in this case, We've gone there, one, two, three, little twists. The twists are more cosmetic, but they also finish it off nicely. It's a little bit of stainless steel wire. It's not gonna rust. And so, there we go. We've got our little wire across the back. People can hang it up. I'm not gonna put bump-ons on here. They're not gonna serve much purpose. Um, well, it may bring it up to level. We might put some there. Just we'll see if it levels it out a little bit. Some of these, um, the clips themselves, you don't want it rocking around there, but it's going to sit on the on the pieces. But we'll put them on anyway. So what we've done, we've turned one or three old clip frames that were brought in with three pictures into one uh, larger piece where they've got their three photos in one piece and they're able to hang it up. So that hasn't been a very uh, uh, very expensive job. It's a nice simple little thing, but it's something you could do at home as well. If you've got clip frames and you get a piece of glass cut to size or if you cut some yourself, you could 
change the size of a clip frame. It's just a matter of positioning the point that the clips clip onto and then resizing everything to fit. So look, I'll, I'll end the stream there, but if you've got any questions, you can always, uh, you can always catch us uh, at uh, fixaframe.com.au. Uh, we, we, we do all sorts of custom framing, and a lot of you guys that know me from broadcast for the Framers Club and also on the Endure Art channel. So if you tune in next time, uh, we're tending to do a little bit more live stuff now that we've got our high-speed broadband back. So uh, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments and I'll answer you when I get a chance to have a look at them. Thanks for coming today. We'll see you next time.